In this question, we're trying to find the Nyquist rate for a single-sided exponential. So, in trying to find the Nyquist rate, we usually try to start thinking in the frequency domain. Because what we're after is the bandwidth. So the Nyquist rate will be twice the bandwidth. But this signal, as you can see, is not band-limited. And that is a problem for us, because normally the Nyquist rate would be twice the bandwidth. So what we're going to use instead is an approximation. So we're going to say, well, even though it's not band-limited, as long as the energy we can assume to lie between, or 99% of the energy can lie between two frequencies, plus and minus, uppercase omega, then we can use that estimate, or we can use that value for omega as an estimate for the bandwidth. Now to do this, we don't need to know the shape of the spectrum. I mean, it's helpful to visualize it, but we don't need it. So where do we start? I guess we would need to know the value of omega. So in this question, you'll be given, although you can easily find it, you'll be given a value for the 99% um, containment bandwidth. So it's A tan 0 0.99 pi over 2. And in this question, a is the coefficient of time in the exponential, and so we can replace that with pi. And we can easily calculate that. Remember, your calculator has to be in radians. Otherwise, the answers will be meaningless. So if I put that into the calculator, get a value that's almost 200 radians per second. So that is this value here. This value is 200 radians per second. So if we use that as an approximation for our bandwidth, then our sample rate will be 2 times that. That's uh, or maybe I shouldn't have called it the sample rate. Let's call it the Nyquist rate, which is the minimum sample rate. Will be 400 radians per second. And if we want to convert that into um, um, hertz, that's 400 divided by 2 pi. So let's just write that. And that will give you 63.7 hertz. So that means that our samples will be um, 1 divided by 63.7 seconds apart. So the time between samples, if we were to sample at the, at the Nyquist rate, would be 0 0.016 seconds apart. So that's your Nyquist rate in hertz. That's the period between samples. And if I wanted to show that on this illustration here, that means that the time difference between these samples needs to be at most 0 0.016 seconds. So here we're sampling our signal, converting it into a discrete time signal. The time between these um, samples, that's your TS. So your time between samples has to be less than or equal the um, time we just calculated.